Hey everyone, I'm Scott Stokely and I have a story about Japan that is gonna freaking blow your minds. By the way, none of this is exaggerated. I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. So most of you probably know that Japan is safe. If you've ever Googled the safest countries on earth, you know, Japan and Iceland, and you know, there's a few places that rank way higher than most of the places I've <laughs> lived in my life, right? It's safe. And in fact, if you read my book, Scott Stokely Growing Up Disc Golf, I told a story about being here in 1995 and like, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I, I, we would be in a park in the middle of Tokyo, the largest city on earth, and we would see families videotaping, that's what we used to call videoing back then. They'd be videotaping their kids with their gigantic video cameras that by today's money was probably like a three or $4,000 piece of equipment. I mean, it's a major investment to have a video camera back then. They would videotape their families. And once they were done videoing, if they wanted to go somewhere else in the park, there's no need to, to lug this gigantic camera around. You just set it on the ground under a tree or you set it on a bench and you go do something else in the park. It'll be there when you come back. A couple hours later, you come back, there's your camera sitting there. Like, it's just, it's not that it's safe. It's literally just not part of the paradigm to steal. Nobody worries about stealing, doesn't happen. So Japan is safe. We were in Osaka and we're taking the train back to our hotel. Train meaning train, subway, kind of the same thing. So say subway, back to the hotel. And we had to take a train. We stopped and used the restroom at where we were transferring. We took another train, subway, right? Got off the train, we walked to the restaurant. We get to the restaurant. Adrienne opens up her purse. Her phone's not there. Now, don't click away thinking the punchline is, she got her phone back. Japan is safe. Like, that's nothing compared to what actually happened. Uh, she looks in her purse. The phone's not there. Well, we know because she had it on the first train. She either left it in the restroom between the stations or on the other train. And God only knows where it is at this point if it's on the train. But we look on my phone. Sure enough, it's at the, the train station where we transferred. Okay, she left in the bathroom. We're not the slightest bit worried. It's Japan. Nobody's going to take the phone. We're going to get it back, right? So... We walk back to the station, we talk to the person, they, they call, they look for it, whatever. We get on the train. It's like an hour and a half or two hours later before we return to the station where the phone was lost. And we can see on my phone, the phone is still in the station. So she goes to the bathroom, looks around, it's not there. Okay, no big deal. Someone probably picked it up, turned it into the office. So we go to the office. Now you have to picture what this looks like, it's relevant five turnstiles right you can go in or out of every single turnstile but basically five turnstiles for getting out of the train you need five because thousands of people every hour go through these turnstiles and right next to the turnstile is the office with these big windows so people in the office can see the turnstile and help people out if they need it well the office is closed like all the, the the curtains are down in the office but we can see the phones here we're like no big deal we'll just come back tomorrow then Adriana looks down. Her phone is sitting on the one, basically on one of the turnstiles. So this is what happened. Someone turned in the phone. The person in the office has the phone. They figure the person that lost the phone is probably gonna come back, but they're going home for the night. Well, they don't want the person to come back and not be able to get their phone back because the office is closed. So what does the person at the office do? the most logical thing. They take the phone, they set it down on the turnstile because that way the thousands of people that go by will all see the phone. Presumably that would include the owner. Basically, it's like if your roommate forgot their phone, you, you take the phone and you set it by the front door so when the roommate comes home, they'll, they'll see the phone as they walk in. The person at the office set the phone there because if the owner of the phone doesn't figure out where their phone is and doesn't come back, no big deal. When the person at the office comes to work the next morning, the phone will still be on the turnstile. Trains run all night, by the way. The phone will still be on the turnstile. You, they would take it and take it back to the office with them. It's not just that nobody steals. It's that it's so outside the realm of Japanese culture to steal 
that they did not have a problem setting the phone on the turnstile in the subway for thousands of people to see. That happened. All right, if you're interested in stories like this from traveling around the world about all these different places, please post in the comments. But yeah, this is a special place, y'all. Unbelievable. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks.